Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you all for being here today. At this time, I'd like to introduce Reverend Paul Melson. He's going to lead us in our services this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. As we come together to remember Peter or Pete or maybe Papu, you might have known him as, my hope and my prayer is that my words might bring perspective. God's word and scripture may bring comfort and understanding, and God's spirit will fill you with peace. Friends, we have gathered here to thank God for the gift of life and to ask God for his comfort and his peace as we celebrate Peter's life. We hold on to our faith that God is always with us, that he never leaves us nor forsakes us. In that hope and thought, we come to celebrate, acknowledging our grief and our loss, but also affirming our faith and Peter's faith in the one who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. May that God be known to us in Jesus Christ. Grant us grace that in our pain we might find comfort, in our sorrow, hope, and death, resurrection. So let us worship God in this time. Let's pray. Our God, we give you thanks for this day. We thank you for a time of celebration. We thank you that even in a time of sadness, we know that there is hope because there is hope beyond the grave. And so as we remember, remember Peter's life this day, we ask that your presence would be with the family and friends gathered here. We ask that you would come and uh, help us celebrate life and help us to remember the truths that you share with us. So be with us family and friends, for we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Scripture says, The Lord is my light and my ship salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me and to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war breaks out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, and this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. As you've thought about Pete or Papu or Dad or however you referred to him in the last few days, maybe this poem sums up some of your thoughts. I thought of you with love today, but that is nothing new. I thought about you yesterday and days before that too. I think of you in silence. I often speak your name. All I have are memories and your picture in a frame. Your memory is my keepsake with which I'll never part. God has you in his keeping. I have you in my heart. Dear friend of uh, Pete, whose name is Rob, who's going to come and share some thoughts. Rob. <clears throat> Thank you. I didn't meet Pete till he was about 74 years old. He had a whole life before I met him. <clears throat> but what an impact. And I hope that's true for all of you. Um, it was an absolute, absolute honor to be asked by Christy and Evie to read the uh, eulogy on behalf of the family. I'm a little nervous, <laughs> but Pete's going to get me through this. Pete was raised in Southwest Philly. He grew up with his great parents and six siblings. He played basketball for St. George Church as a forward, traveling to many cities like New York, Chicago, and Philly with the Greek Church basketball team. He graduated from John Bartram High School in 1944. Right after graduation, he joined the Army stationed in, in the Philippines until 1946 as a staff sergeant. He went to Greek dances at St. George Church where he met Mary and they married in 1951 for 65 years. They had two children, Evie and Christine, and moved from West Philly to Center City, Nashville. 
He still worked in Philly as a food distributor and on the weekends as a realtor. In Center City, as part of the Mantua Athletic Association, he coached the first ever girls softball team and then later became the treasurer. In the neighborhood, all the neighbors were like family, no doubt. That's how he was. Pete loved his family, friends, and neighbors. He was a great father, husband, and papu, and great papu. He was also a strong believer in God. In 1976, he was baptized at Calvary Bible Church after he received Jesus Christ as his Savior. He attended Calvary Bible Church for over 30 years, where he met many new friends, and then he's still very close to them until his passing. As part of the church, he drove the van to pick up kids for Sunday school. He then attended Fellowship Bible Church that he also loved. He was a fun-loving dad. He was very involved with his children's lives. In the winters, he would go sledding with the children and the rest of the kids on the block. Most of the time, he was the only person over 10. <laughs> so many great memories, like drive-in movies, watching the Philly sports teams, scary movies on TV, vacationing at the shore, and barbecuing at Herf Lake. <laughs> he was remembered for how much he cared about his family and the people in the neighborhood. Whenever you spoke to him, you really felt like he was listening and cared about what you were saying. He made you feel special. One funny story, Pete was a big supporter of the Mantua football team. He would often hold up a big sign that read 100%, encouraging the boys to give 100%, and even would run down the sidelines. One time, while running down the sidelines during the game with the sign, you could picture this, <laughs> he ran directly into a Volkswagen. <laughs> at the, at the year-end banquet, when the team won the championship, the football team presented him with a miniature trophy of a gold Volkswagen <laughs> that read 100%. Man, that is, that is so funny. <laughs> Thank you for letting me read this. Thank you. I want to talk for a minute or two. I do have a second page. About a few things. I was going to number them one through three, but it grew. So a few things. I won't put a number on it so you won't know when I'm done. That I admired about Pete. Like I said, I didn't meet Pete until he was around 72. Um, I ended up on the church band with him, going to pick up kids. And he... His excitement to pick up kids, this is later on, but I'm going to say it now. His excitement to pick up kids was amazing because he looked at it and said, man, these kids are going to have such an opportunity that we didn't have as young kids to know Jesus Christ and serve them. He was amazed by it. He was thrilled to do it every Sunday. I couldn't beat him there. He was there early <laughs> every Sunday. And then I would hate when I had to call and say, Pete, I can't make it. And Al was always there, man, as a backup or a second van. Al was with me, too. It was great. Unbelievable. But he was excited to bring kids to church. Pete loved and was so proud of his family. From his nephew, Augie, Pete gave me a, a, a what are they called, VHS cassette. Like, <laughs> I don't even know what they're called. Like, I'm, I'm old, and I don't know what they're called. But he's like, you gotta watch my nephew box, man, and he knows, Je like, it wasn't even about him really box, it was that he knew Jesus, and he was successful box. It was unbelievable. He was, he was proud of his family. From Augie coming to Christ in boxing, to Evie bringing up the quality man, Peter. <laughs> to Christine working so hard at Toys R Us. He hated Toys R Us, but he loved their work at him. <laughs> to coming to take care of him and reading scripture with him, Dale. It was unbelievable. No matter what was going on, Mary being sick, Pete having bladder, kidney, prostate issues, all the things he wouldn't tell us what was going on, all he would say is, God is good all the time. 22 years ago, when I started driving with Pete on that van is when he talked about the kids at an early age having the opportunity to serve God. Pete was everyone's biggest cheerleader. We <laughs> talked about him running down the sideline with that sign. We used to play church softball and he would be out there. Last year he came to my daughter's junior high game and he was yelling at the young. <laughs> the young deserved it. But he was never afraid to open his mouth. <laughs> Oh, he was everybody's biggest cheerleader. 
He started talking to me about his grandson, Peter, a long time ago. He said he's so smart, so driven with a great work ethic. He knew that was my love language. He said we deserve everything we get as long as we work hard and love Jesus. He loved his church family like his own. He loved the reunion lunches at Seven Star and the Fourth of July morning. Knowing he had more, uh, we used to have men's class on Sunday morning, Sunday school. <laughs> Pete normally was the oldest guy there, and he knew he had more experiences in life than anybody else there that was teaching. But he was still humble enough to lean in and learn from younger men. It's a rare thing today. I'll close by saying if you ever spoke with Pete by phone or in person, you truly saw a great man of God. And I'm also sure he ended that conversation by thanking you for being his friend. Can't wait to see him again. Yeah. Yeah. Are there others who have a quick story or a quick uh, word to share? I'd like to. <laughs> so I'm uh, one of uh, Peter Pantelis' uh, grandsons. He was my papu along with my brother David. Um, and, uh, you know, looking around the room, um, he was many things. He was, he was a father. He was a husband. Um, he was a war veteran. He was a great Papu. Um, <laughs> he was our Papu. He was a man of Christ. Um, he was a hardworking man. And uh, he was also a very, very proud Greek. <laughs> um, you know, talking a lot with Papu and learning about his life. Growing up uh, in Philly, he, uh, you know, he didn't have an easy life growing up. But through hard work, faith, and positivity, he made it a great one. Um, he was almost one of the most caring and loving people I've ever known. Um, I don't know if it's the faith in him or him just being a loud Greek, but every time um, you know you either call on the phone or you come in, um, he kind of will burst into a, a mini applause and be like, "Hey, David's here!" Hey. <laughs> and it was just like your uh, your presence alone was celebration enough. He didn't want to do anything. He, he made you feel special. He he cared about you, um, and he cared so much about what you were saying, like. Um, you know, he he never asked like a blanket uh, question and didn't want the response to. You had to give him an answer. And if he uh, if he didn't understand, he would ask you a million times in a million different ways until <laughs> until he got an answer that he understood. Um, and you know, we love him for that. So he truly was one of the greatest um, people I've ever known. Uh, you know, I wish I had the wisdom. Uh, earlier in life to realize what a great man he was and I could learn more from him. But um, I like to think that just uh, without us realizing it and subconsciously that we're better people and we learn from him just from having him in our lives. Yeah. So on a day of today, let's not be sad, but let's think of let's think of the happy memories and who he was as a person, whether it was his faith, um, his hard work ethic, how much he loved, how much he cared about people. Um, those are the things that we should remember, and maybe we can be um, better for it, too. So, and he would be proud of all of us. So, thank you. Yeah. Sing one of Uncle Pete's favorite songs. favorite songs. The day before he died, I sang this to him. It's like I got a prompting. I, I, I believe from the Lord to to uh, sing, you know, to sing the song to him. And when he heard it, Chrissy was laughing because he started responding to it, and he was out. But he heard it. He heard about Jesus, and Jesus excited him more than anything on earth. He, he had the Holy Spirit in it, and he felt him, his presence always. And isn't it ironic that my mother, this is my mother's anniversary, two years anniversary, that was his sister, and they died in September as the queen, Elizabeth died, 
and they were all 69. <laughs> and, I, and I consider them all royalty because they were all believers. Mm -hmm. uh, Queen Elizabeth was a believer too, very strong. I loved him dearly. He would always encourage me and say, Oh, Harry, you love the Lord like my mother. His mother, Ariaya, so everything was Jesus. She was a little farm girl. She didn't have much. Her father was murdered when she was young. She lost her one and a half year old son, Johnny, who was younger than Uncle Pete. She had so much tragedy, but she always said, the Lord will provide, the Lord will get us through this. And her faith inspired Uncle Pete. His whole life, he could never get away from it. And when he, he read the word of God, he said, this is for me. I'm going to give my whole life to Jesus, and that's it. He loved the Lord with all his heart, soul, and mind. And it affected everyone that, like that young man who articulated so beautifully that man. It affected every part of his life. And I love you, Uncle Pete. I will see you again. We'll be in your presence. It's just a short time. This, is, this life is but a vapor, the Bible says, and we will be in your presence with Jesus forever and ever. So we'll see you, and I'm going to give you the biggest hug, and I'm going to just... Tell her, just kiss you as much as I can. You'll let me. Because he was a little shy. You know? <laughs> so he, I sang the song uh, the day before, and my precious, <clears throat> this is all. I, I remember. My precious I, cousin Obi, he's another uh, man of great faith. He shares with everyone. I'm, yeah. Oh, yeah, I this is brother and son. Uh, one day, uh, Uncle Big was in our house. We were sitting on the couch. I think it was my dad and me and Uncle Pete. My mom was on the chair, whatever. And we were talking about Jesus. And he was he grew up in the Greek Orthodox Church. Uh, and the, uh, the Greek Church is, is is a church that doesn't preach. Well, I don't want to get into that, but he didn't, know, <laughs> he, didn't know, he didn't know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. He went to church, but he wasn't taught to be born again. He wasn't taught about the blood that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And we were talking about it, and, he, and I was telling him about it. it's Jesus, only Jesus. It's not the church, it's not the priest, it's not the, it's Jesus, Jesus. That's it. If we confess that we're sinners and we believe that he's the Christ, the Son of a living God, we'll be saved. There's, and I explained this so I said, there's, you can't work your way to heaven. You can't pray to the saints. It's Jesus only. And he, and he, and he, and he didn't realize that. He, you know, because all the Greeks, they pray to the Blessed Mother, the saints. And I'm telling you, no, it's through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but through me, Jesus said. And he, and he was listening and listening. And, and, and he realized the Holy Spirit came upon him and he realized that it's only Jesus. It's Jesus. And he went home. Start driving the bus. <laughs> <laughs> he ended up driving the bus and being recorded. And I just, you know, it was that day on the couch. I believe he really was touched by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. And we're going to, Sam, if we believe Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Let's try to sing this song out loud. Right. One more thing. <laughs> Christy is the best caregiver I ever yes. saw. <laughs> Sister Eve always helped us. Yes. She always encouraged us. And we want to say thank you for letting Uncle Pete have such beautiful grandchildren. Great grandchildren. He always wanted a son, and you fulfilled oh, there. We <laughs> so you did a lot in his life. He loved David. He used to say that your husband's a teacher. He loved Peter yeah. dearly. He loved you both extremely dearly. And you fulfilled that son thing in his life. <laughs> Thank you, 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 Thank
Fred, I recall it. Sorry, that she's favorite. favorite song. Forgive me, I have a cold, a upper respiratory song. <laughs> He's a better singer than me. Are you a <laughs> On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. To the old rugged cross I will ever be true, its shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me one day to his home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. Uncle Peter glorified right now with him. And so we'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. And let me say one more thing in defense of my brothers and sisters that are Catholic. Many of you have called upon the name of Jesus and you have a Holy Spirit in you and I will see you in heaven too. It's not a Protestant thing. It's a faith thing, and many Catholics have great faith. I've met them that love Jesus even more than I do, and I want to say, but you have to be born again. The Spirit has to come into you. That's all. It's, you could be anywhere at any time. You could be in a bar. You could be anywhere, and God will catch you. God will get you. It's, it's just born of the name. Amen. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, you know, we we talk about um, respect, um, and I've always thought about the term respect, and you know how I feel about respecting others and how I feel, you know, people should uh, be respected. And, you know, I always thought about why, why did I always respect my grandfather so much? What, what was it about him that, that made me feel such a, a respect and reverence? Because it certainly wasn't that he put any sort of pressure on me or anything like that. Um, I think it comes from the fact that I, well, excuse me. Um, you know, he, he's a, con you know, I, I know, you know, he, he served and um, he was a hard worker for his, his entire life. But, you know, I, I thought about, um, you know, but that those aren't the things that, that made me respect him. The things that made me respect him was how he treated people. And I think, and you know, he was always so loving and supportive and kind to, to everyone he, he ever met. Um, you know, and, and like my brother said before, you know, it, it didn't it didn't matter what what you, you, you did, you know, he, he was still in your corner no matter what. And he, he always, um, 
he was always there for us, you know, we would always, even if we hadn't seen him, we would always call, and he would always call us uh, every every day, or every year on our birthdays. Uh, we'd get a phone call, we'd get the whole song. <laughs> um, and, you know, I still, I still have it, I still have it on my phone. Um, I still have the recording on my phone, and it's something I'll never, I'll never erase. Um, so, and I just thought about, you know, I, I've never met anyone, you know, so, I'm trying to, I'm trying to put this into words, um, that, that I, I respected so much for, for just the way he, he treated people and the way um, he treated people that he loved. Um, and that's really all I just wanted to say. When I heard about Peter and what he's done in his life, these words seem to be appropriate. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it does not seek self. It is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. There's a story of Jesus in the scripture after a day of healing and teaching and walking with his friends and the disciples and all. He gets into this boat and he starts going across the Sea of Galilee. It was a long, busy day. He falls asleep. And in the middle of the lake, all of a sudden, one of those freak storms that happens on the lake sometimes began to come up. The wind came, the waves came, the water came, and everybody's in the boat scared, and Jesus is asleep in the boat. They're, everybody in the boat's trying to figure out how not to get swamped, how not to uh, die, how not to uh, capsize, and Jesus is asleep. One of his uh, followers finally says, well, we need an extra hand. Let me wake him. He wakes Jesus up and says, hey, can you do something? Can you help? What can you do? Jesus stands, looks at what's going on, just says, peace, be still. And the water that was so rough, the rain that was coming, the wind that was blowing ceased. And that lake became like Lake Placid. And at that point, they weren't quite sure who he was, but they knew he was from God. Turned out he was God. After 96 years of life, after many storms that he battled through, some he would tell you about, some he wouldn't, after all the concerns that rocked his world at times and rocked your world when it just felt like it was getting too much. Again, God in God's way and God's time just said, peace, be still. And Peter made it from this life safely over to the next where there is peace, where there is wholeness, where there is life, where there's no pain, no sickness. And we celebrate that, and yet, for some of us, it's still a sad time. Because this thing called grief, and this thing called uh, transition, and this thing called losing a loved one, however we knew him, feels almost like a storm for us. The grief gets intense, it feels like waves, the sadness feels like the wind blowing against us, it feels like we're in the dark of night. 
And as Jesus calmed the storm 2,000 years ago, and as God calmed the storm for Peter a couple days ago, in our grief and in our sadness, God can come to us and say, peace, be still. And allow us to celebrate Pete's life. Allow us to remember all the stories, all the events, those uh, times that you love and those times that you laugh and those times that you wish you had back. And God helps us through that time to get us to another side where our celebration is with smiles. Our celebration is with great memories. Our celebration is living out our faith because what his faith did for us. So as you go through this time, there's a lot to celebrate. There's a lot to uh, embrace. Realize that the sadness and the loneliness and the grief is but a storm. And God will say to that storm in his time, peace, be still. So stay with that faith that helps you in the sunny, beautiful days like we have outside. And that will help you weather the storms. And I know that Pete is looking down on you, saying he's there for you 100%. <laughs> Thankfully, there's just no... Thankfully, there's just no Volkswagens upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> the Apostle Paul said these words, and I'm sure they is said of Pete. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but all who have longed for his appearance. And the psalmist says, truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He's my fortress. I will never be shaken. So hear these words of benediction. And now may the peace of God, which is greater than all human understanding, guard and keep your life in God's eternal care. Grant you the knowledge and the hope in our Lord Jesus Christ and provide for your coming and your going, that you may live in love and joy through God's Spirit this day, now, and forever. Amen. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we're going to prepare to go to the Gloucester County Veterans Cemetery for military honors of Paul's and Lilith. And we'll have a little middle prayer there also. If anyone is not going with us to this cemetery, you're welcome to pay your respects to the family. We just ask you to start in the back room and work your way forward so the immediate family has some time to themselves. When we travel in procession, we just ask you to use your headlights and flashes if you're driving to the vehicle also. Uh, but if anyone wants to come up and pay your respects, you're welcome to do so. We'll get ready to go to the cemetery. Thank you. Thank you. It's a Thanks for coming. <laughs> 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 
No, I wrote it, oh, wrote it a couple yeah. of nights ago. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Very, very good. Uh, the the you're welcome. So the guys from here, all the flowers are sitting here. I know where to come tomorrow. That's fine. I really need to tell the professor. So you can have to the you want to take in your car and tell them to um, I'd rather just Well, that's he's the speaker. I, I, I knew that. I knew mean, I could tell. And and but my God, you're not even a note. Right. Well, that's how David always Great job. Thank you for saying that. Come on, Bob. Love you. Love you. Yeah, that's I like no, you're not so I'm <laughs> 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 